The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. We are here to learn many lessons as we walk in the suffering process of Christ. Believer has been not called to stay into the realm of bed of roses. Satan knew very well that when you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your salvation has been absolutely secured. Positionally, you are being superior than to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. Experientially, you need to acquire that status. You need to grow up. And in order to grow up, it requires doctrine. And our Lord said, you are going to suffer a little while so that you should be perfected. Not the same word as the telilio which has been used, but katakrizo, a great word which we need to understand. The terms and conditions which could be very well judged, which could be very well filled, so that now you can stabilize, you could be established, and you could come to the reality of the word, and you can understand what are you in Christ, your position in the Lord. It is of a very great privilege, dear brethren, that we walk in this day-to-day -day life. It is of a very great privilege, dear brethren, that we need to enjoy the great privilege of Christ in his grace. But we are really trying to enjoy in the lustful patterns of the old sin nature by worrying about this flesh. But we are not able to enjoy the true worthiness wherewith Lord has chosen us to the praise of his glory. Dear brethren, there was a man recorded long back before the first flood could come and erase the creation. Enoch walked with God and he was not for God to him. What a great lessons of principles we need to learn from this. A period of 300 years in the life of this man of God is summed up in one single phrase, which is, Enoch walked with God. What a great honor Enoch received. And in Hebrews 11, we learn that he pleased God. And what a reward. He did not see that because God took him to be with him. But was Enoch the holy, the only one who walked with God? No. We read the same thing of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect among his generations. Noah walked with God in Genesis nine, Genesis six nine through ten. We need not envy this man. God desires that man would walk with Him. In fact, when He said to Abraham, "I am the Almighty God. Walk before My face and be perfect." Genesis 17:1. But they couldn't have the completed canon, neither even the law. But these three men, they walked without having the written Bible in their hands. At the same time, now in the church age, we, the church age believers, have been mandated to walk in the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit so that we can establish, we could be settled, we could have 100% perfection in the knowledge of Christ and show forth in this great angelic conflict that the Lord God Almighty is always right. But the problem with these church age believers, they are not able to comprehend they are not able to come and understand the reality of the world. Neither they are able to come and look what it is that we need to walk in the Spirit. Those men, they were not even aware of the Spirit. Those men, they were not even aware of anything else. But they walked in the Spirit and pleased God to take him home. And that's what the Bible sums up, is 300 years of walk with God. Today, we are not called to walk 300 years because no man can survive more than 120, 30 years today. But we have a command given to us. 
this short span of time after salvation as we go through, this very, very, very short span of time, it is not even worth to be counted as one generation. Today the generations are coming out within 20, 25, 30 years. But those days the generations were different. But then today they walked with the Lord. But today what are we doing? Though we have the completed camp of scripture in our hands, though we have the permanence of indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in us, though we have each and everything in us, and we have a great mandate to be controlled of the Spirit, to be filled of the Spirit, which is an imperative mode, constantly we need to do that. So that our very perpetual, which should be walking in the Spirit, so that we should not fulfill the lust patterns of the old sin nature, but rather be faithful to God. That where is our walk today? That you need to judge yourself. I don't require any answers as such where you're walking. You know very well what are your area of weaknesses and what are your area of strength which you want to cover the, to, that, to, to that weaknesses by your all sin nature legalisms. Dear brethren, think over this issue. We need to walk before God and need to be perfect. In this church age, it is possible only by the Spirit. No other method we can walk. No other trends we can follow. No other procedure we can learn. But in the Spirit, we can do valiantly and reign with Jehovah forever. With Him, His Spirit on walks. With us, we need to walk in that Spirit. So today also the wind is very strong. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our headboard and eyes closed, the closing movement being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In our ability telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself you shall have the eternal truth. The eternal truth for is for very simple. Believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. And whereas for the believer, the great man, it is very clear. Drop in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, so that you shall learn to acquire and know the truth. The truth shall set you free. For the pastor teacher, the great man, it is to kerusothon lagan, herald the word in season and out of season. Because of the great diamatrum of witnesses wherewith you have been called. The diamatrum of witnesses in dwelling trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. At the same time, we have the diamatrum of one. Being number one priority, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But our work is not to worry about the softies of this world, but rather be faithful in rightly dividing the word of the Lord and giving number one priority for doctrine. If this life is not for doctrine, then this life is not worth at all to live, which is a life not based upon doctrine, but the system thinking of this cosmos diabolicus. We don't have anything to be thought of in this earth. We need to learn only doctrine, 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 so that we can walk in the spirit. And only when we are walking in the spirit, we can come to know the reality of our life on this earth, the true survival of life on this earth, and leave behind a greater impact in this angelic conflict. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. For the temporary things of this earth, you want to exchange the glory of Lord to a lie. Exchange the glory of Lord for some handful of barley or for some pieces of bread that is left to you. But remember, every deed, every word, every act will be brought into the judgment seat of Christ. And if you are not recording the history pillar in the grace of Christ, you will be having a tough time to learn. No winner believers except only having the resurrection body. That's it. Nothing to show forth. And that is only not for a momentary time, but for eternity, which is a very long time. A very, very long time. The corridor of times of dimensions, you cannot calculate what it is, eternity. So better, it is good for us to give number one priority for doctrine, walk in the spirit of Lord God Almighty, and to be perfected, catechizo, and get back to the perfection of establishment and to have a thorough settlement in Christ, so that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ might be glorified. It is not 
that you need to calculate, I am a winner believer. It is to calculate your day-to-day -day walk, your day-to-day -day line, your day-to-day -day year, whether it was for the glory of Lord in giving number one priority for doctrine and growing up in His grace, or it was for something else in exchange for this doctrine. You need to self-evaluate. Day by day process is a self-evaluation. Day by day time that you give two hours, 40 minutes for Christ is your tithe. Day by day edification of your soul from a right pastor teacher who is going to train you up is the privilege. And we cannot go anything further from the truth. We are here to witness for the truth, no matter what it comes. We are here to stand for the truth. We are here to suffer a while and to be perfected to the praise of His glory. So we shall continue tomorrow. Father, I'm grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to fellowship with you through thy word. Challenge us by the things from the life of Enoch. Without the completion of canon, he lived a life that is great. Abraham, without Bible in his hands, he lived a life and you, and you called him as his friend. Moses, while he was writing the Torah, you called him a man of faithful in all of your house. And David, though he had some of the writings, he was being called a man after God's own heart. And we, the church age believers, make, being, made it, being made adult, you are given us the privilege to call Lord God the Father as Abba Father. So, not only that, besides being given the power to call Abba Father, you have given them the privilege of completed canon scripture, and above all, you have given them the indwelling trinity, which can guide us and lead us in thy truth. So help us to walk perfectly, Lord, not just perfectly, but with a perfect matureness and completely, to the completeness in the knowledge of thy Christ, to the maximum glorification, to be unreprovable at the judgment seat of Christ. To this section, we pray that God get the Holy Spirit enlighten us. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.